Will now, okay. invite uh, again Hello. our close friend and uh, dynamic uh, scientific committee member, Dr. Amit Porol, to please invite the next speaker, Dr. Shrikan Sahu, to deliver his talk. Dr. Porol, Amit, please. Excellent talk, Dr. Dean, and thanks, Dr. Balla, for inviting me, Dr. Shrikan Sahu. Dr. Shrikan Sahu is basically a cataract and anti segment fellow done from LVPI. He has got advanced training in coronary research from Stephen Science Research Institute, Harvard, USA. He's over, he has over 50 peer reviewed articles in national and international journals. So, over to you, Dr. Shikan, who would like to hear about SICS from you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for inviting me. Give me a minute for saying my screen. Is it visual? Getting, uh, ready? Uh, yeah. Dr. Will, yeah. if you are around, we would uh, really like to take your comments on the different scenarios that we are discussing today, if it's all right with you. Will. Yeah. Carry on, Shikant, please. Yeah. Is, it, is my slide visual? Am I audible? Yeah, Shikant. Okay. Hi. Uh, again, uh, welcome all. Thanks for uh, inviting me. I would like to talk after a fantastic talk by Will. I'll talk about something little uh, different, different, different sense. These people who have a collaborative eye are always, to begin with, are in a uh, disordered stage of uh, visually, visually. So, and when they come with cataract, it's still more challenging. The challenge is one, there is clear weakness at the cleft region. Two, there is general deficiency. We need to assess how much is the general deficiency. Most often than not, there is a pupillary dilation. The pupillary dilation is poor. And is uh, most of the time also uh, associated with many other things like microcornea, micro which we need to take care. Okay. So what is the priority, uh, like the base? Is it FACO or SISS? Based on, uh, it's basically based on the grade of cataract, which will come down. The, okay, the, the, the most important thing is we need to discuss with the visual prognosis with the patients uh, beforehand. Reason is, even if you do a fantastic surgery, the outcome may not be good as per the patient because they already have an inherent uh, deficiency. So we need to discuss that before the surgery. Uh, yes, and also also discuss that this surgery is not going to be the way a normal cataract surgery will ever be. What are the technical challenges? One is a steep and deep uh, inferior staphylococcus. Expect uh, inferior staphylococcus uh, is clear staphyloma. So the periobral uh, injection uh, is like uh, is little uh, risky. So general anesthesia is sometimes best, but mostly not. Uh, risk uh, uh, good uh, periobral anesthesia is great, but I would never ever uh, go in for a topical because uh, most of us now do it topically only. But right now in this kind of cases, there's a, a, a Periodal anesthesia, which is good. We need to be ready with uh, iris uh, dilating measurements, how to dilate the iris uh, if it's not dilating properly. We need to assess how large is the capsule uh, 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 journal dialysis and be ready with uh, devices like capsule tensioning. We need to use more of uh, dispersive uh, OVDs. Also, a preoperative manitol and a limited past plan vitamin is sometimes advised to reduce the posterior, uh, posterior pressure and previous a private aqueous misdirection, which is very common in this kind of case situations. The other things which we need to take care of is one, there's a crowded or sallow antechamber, which is seen mostly in microconia and if the small axial length. So in these kind of cases, we need to put OVDs, if at all, more often than not. The all power calculation, some say uh, because of the anticipatory Effective lens portion, we may do some amount of myopia, hyperopia is jammed. But for me, I would still go, go in for a zero uh, target. Pupiloplast is one important component, which is more than other uh, SSS methods, because here, not only the lens, we have to help with the, uh, deal with the uh, pupil. Now, let's go to one of the cases, which I will say. Now, one thing for sure, the size of the insulin will be little larger if what would have do for a normal case. Reason, we do not know how, how deep is the antechamber, so I do not want to uh, really make uh, the endothelium little uh, compromise. So first, for larger insulin, blue is a must because the, the rectus size is a little smaller than the 
triple the size and to make the uh, the uh, the people say little larger we can do uh, spectrotomies or may, by many methods what i use is a micro forceps which people use for retina scissors uh, to make the cuts so that we can have a uh, and blue uh, to stepping blue helps with uh, making the the visibility for the uh, capsule a little better and in this case what what i'm trying to do is or uh, rexis which i'm trying to do which is larger than what the size of the pupil is and the uh, staining with trifon blue helps me to do it comfortably without even seeing the edges and i need to do a uh, large uh, uh, rexis because the capsule is brownish which is mostly in case of uh, coloma now we do a large uh, incision and now this is the most important part here do not ever put any pressure on the uh, dialysis area now look at the dialysis large one the zona dialysis and the lenticular dialysis so here without pressing putting pressure any pressure on the uh, dialysis area take out the nucleus and you can see how the nucleus is hard to uh, a different thing is that i use a ac maintainer i'll tell about it later and take out all co uh, cortex leaving apart from the area of the of the joy uh, the uh, coloma so that you don't put any pressure first take out everything as far as possible loosen the uh, which one not doesn't come out loosen and here do not put it perpendicular pull it tangentially so that it does not put pressure on the uh, journal directly and some people even say leave the cortex leave it a little bit to try to put the lens in the haptic in the back with the haptic in the journal dialysis area so that it stabilizes the stabilizes the um, bag now one thing for sure which is a better method to take it out which is the better method to do what i would suggest is stick to the principles what you are comfortable with now i am comfortable with blue menthol technique what i did is i lowered the bottle height and did the surgery the other option for me would be that to change it to a vectris delivery because i'm not comfortable with the anatomy the way of putting the vectris and it will be much more dangerous so what i would suggest whatever you are comfortable with be uh, uh, be with the same technique but ensure that the anti chamber is deep so in a nutshell what all things to, we need to learn from uh, these uh, cases one we need to do a little larger uh, incision than what we normally do so that there is no amount of stress on the anterior chamber or the endothelium and the uh, nucleus is delivered nicely we try to ensure a ccg yes one thing for sure we can use of a, a forceps ultra forceps or a pediatric rexis forceps which is better for a, a rexis than a cystotome but choice depends on you but a staining for the uh, nucleus is must the pip the if it is not only the people you need to do a spectrotomy for uh, like or else at least use a iris hooks for me spectrotomy is better a gentle hydro dissection without any pressure on the uh, on the uh, uh, on the jonules which are weak is a must nucleus delivery by a vectris or a gentle visco or a blue methyl uh, whichever you are comfortable if you are using blue methyl technique a low visco uh, low bottle height is mandatory for ia leave the arc of uh, coloma to the last bottle height kept uh, must be kept uh, low to prevent uh, fluid misdirection syndrome uh, and uh, the uh, the cross is the area where coloma is there is to the last and some people say leave it alone so that that area become opaque and the person is better off endocapsule should be a uh, ring should be a hand if you think that the journal this is much more than necessary you need to put the iol in the back with the uh, haptics in the area of the journal's instability if it is unstable make it efficient and sfl is also another option if the uh, iris is a, a defect as in most of the cases some people do 
uh, most of them they are not we leave it as such because the peop, the the eye adjusts itself in that axis visual axis but to make uh, to make it round we can suture it and optical identity can be made to uh, make the iris much more uh, coherent with the uh, corneal or visual axis thank you thank you dr shrikant that was very wonderfully done nice surgery nice steps and very practical take home messages you have given just one point i would like to make if there you find there is associated coloboma also would you like to do barrage laser on the edges of the coloboma uh, coroid uh, before or after the surgery that is done before the surgery before the surgery. before the surgery yes uh, the these the, practical things are done before the surgery right can i uh, invite dr arup chakravarti to please uh, give comments on this case of sics in colobomatous eye sir dr arup sir please dr arup are you there Not yeah, just just yeah. before Arup, uh, Doctor Kamin, I think I would like to uh, ask the panelist a couple of questions. Doctor uh, Amulya Sau sir is also there. Suppose yeah. patients with the microcornea with the coloboma of iris. So after doing a good SIS, yes, of course the there will be black cataract. The removal of the nucleus itself is very difficult. So. When you are implanting the intraocular lens, especially if you want to implant a foldable lens, do you want to, to cut the haptics or do you want to reduce the size of the IOL? Amulya, sir. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. Yeah. We can hear you, sir. So I did a two days before I did a coloboma case. So I had a vitreous collapse also. Sir, can you speak a little louder, Amulya, sir? Can you speak a little louder, sir? No. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes sir. sir. You are audible, sir. Audible, sir. Yeah, two, two days before I did a coloboma case. And uh, that was a one-eyed patient. I had a vitreous collapse in that case. And uh, I put the lens in the sulcus some cortical matter could not have been removed at that stage so we had to do posteriorly and uh, we had to remove the cortex uh, by the second procedure now now see that the lady i saw yesterday she has a vision about 6 12 vision so and so in these other difficult situation where uh, there is no need to call cut the haptics if you were positioning it properly i don't think you have to cut the haptics yeah, actually, what I did uh, almost around of three weeks before, sir, the, the microcornea, the overall the corneal diameter was so small and the nucleus was very hard. The nucleus delivery was uneventful. But the, uh, when I measured, even uh, the regular IOL size of 5.5 mm haptic itself is bigger than the cornea. Then I thought, okay, I will cut the two haptic. Then I have inserted this IOL within the bag because bag also rexis i did a big rexis almost stretching towards the uh, zonal sir this is what doubt i had so i need to discuss with all the panelists uh, if so, i may be permitted if you are cutting the haptics there is post operative irritations uh, that, uh, uh, you can okay. face continuously they will go on complaining i uh, think they are having some kind of pain and this kind of things. that might lead to yeah, Doctor Ruchi. Uh, yeah, no, I think let's. No, we cannot generalize. I think the whole scenario. It will depend on what kind of coloboma the patient has. Now, the coloboma, it's again going to vary whether it's involving the anterior segment. It's going to involve the posterior segment. It may be associated with a you know microphthalmic eye. It may be associated with an eye with a normal exilin. So there are different scenarios depending on what stage basically you know the development has been affected. Now scenario one where the exit length is normal and we just have a situation where you know either the entire segment is smaller in size. So uh, again the IOL power is going to vary. We one has to be careful if your entire segment is a little smaller in size then the routine lenses are not going to work. You have to either get a custom made lenses, what uh, mm -hmm. I think, uh, um, you know, well, was being discussed. So if you do, if you cannot get a custom made lens made, 
then in that case i have also you know yeah. cut the heptic and i have put it into the bag and it works ha photo da di hai and i have Pata checked nahin. it up yeah. in the literature Pata people who have tried it and it has worked yeah. for them also but then there is a situation where you know the interior uh, segment may not be all that small in size there even a routine iol will go and uh, you know if you fold it it will uh, open up and go right and fit very snugly so i think the whole scenario is going to vary from a patient to patient thank you a uh, uh, one quick comment if i can make please shrikant excellent video you showed um, one thing that uh, i would uh, think that uh, would be pertinent is in such colobomatous uh, uh, lenses as which which are associated with iris coloboma also and a deficient zonule in the inferior part a uh, placement of a ctr a small ctr to fit into the capsular bag before the delivery of the nucleus i mean we do this uh, for phaco emulsification uh, putting in the ctr as soon as it is possible with a very gentle hydrodissection and then going on to the maneuvers because in the sics as we know that the maneuvers are macro maneuvers and would definitely uh, compromise the zonules at uh, uh, some time or the other so a ctr placement a uh, small ctr placement and the second thing that i thought is that uh, what kudlu also said that these are uh, the, uh, associated with microcornea as well as microphthalmos so the uh, 12 mm uh, pmm lens uh, an overall diameter of 12 mm pmm lens inside the bag might not be a difficult proposition and might endanger the capsular integrity also so here a single piece lens uh, where the haptics actually fold on and crowd on to the optic and actually encompass the whole of the capsule could be a better option and of course the option of cutting the haptics which actually might not be required because the crowding uh, you know the haptics can tend to fold on and uh, be uh, in uh, akin to the optic of the lens so these are two things that i just thought to share thank you sir thank you for those valuable comments